Good morning, everyone. Welcome to VCPC Online. Uh, we welcome you to join us in worship this morning. Um, let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to spend time in worship and praise towards you. We pray that um, your name would be lifted high um, and that we would be reminded that your plans and purposes are perfect and you are sovereign over all. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, VCPC family and those who are watching online this morning. So good to have you. Life is complex. As your pastor, I've been concerning about so many of you who have concern about life, about vaccine, maybe the future of this world, um, maybe the finance of this world, uh, maybe your problem at work, maybe the school safety for your children, health issues in your life, perhaps unexpected things that come up in life. In fact, life hasn't been smooth for me this year. It just didn't go my way. Life is full of good news, bad news, and uncertainty. It doesn't always go the way we planned it. And that's what happened to Catherine Wolf. She worked as a model and lived a happy life with her husband, Jade, and their six-month-old baby boy. In April uh, 2008, uh, when things went wrong, things didn't go her way. She suffered an arterial venous malformation that caused a brain stroke. And so she suffered the loss of her fine motor skill, uh, double vision, uh, deafness, 
and, and, and facial uh, paralyzed. So she said this. She said, we feel broken and unable to embrace the life that is right in front of us because we are fixated on the life we don't have. Although she never planned to have this kind of life, but she continued to, to, to trust God, to steward her life well. People witnessed how she used her pain to change her story of life. So this morning, I have a good news for you. When you, things don't go your way, trust that God's grace is sufficient for your circumstances. And He will lead you to greater victory in life. So listen to Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, it was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger that Satan had tormented me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. And that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses, in the insult, hardship, persecution, troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, the Apostles Paul prayed three times for this thorn in his flesh to be removed from his life. But it didn't happen. Things did not go Paul's way as he planned it. You see, God gave Paul wonderful vision, revelation, great opportunities to plant churches, to minister to many people and churches throughout the Greek Roman world. After he became a follower of Jesus, an evangelist, he got sick unexpectedly. We don't know what kind of sickness he got, but three things we do know about the sickness. Number one, it was likely a, a, a physical uh, uh, affliction. And number two, most likely it, it was a hindrance to widen or to be a more effective ministry for Paul. And number three, this is important. It wasn't going away. You see, Paul had gone through all these hardship and suffering to spread the gospel for Jesus. Uh, you just have to go back one chapter to chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians, and you will see that what Paul had experienced, but yet he continued to be faithful to serve God wholeheartedly. When, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And that's what happened uh, to Paul. When things didn't go his way, Paul gave us four powerful lessons to, to respond to any suffering, any affliction in life. So point number two, four powerful lessons to help you to respond to your suffering and affliction. And point number one, know that God's will is for your good. Uh, listen to uh, verse seven again. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and to keep me from becoming proud. So this is important to know. God gave permission, but it was Satan and his demons to, uh, to send the affliction to Paul. God allowed this thorn in his flesh for a reason. And Paul mentioned it twice in this verse. God willed it uh, to use Paul's affliction, the challenge, the, the, the suffering, the, the, the struggle uh, to develop a servant heart and keep him humble. And, and it was for, for Paul's good. It wasn't a punishment for him. A servant heart is a humble heart. So a servant does not seek his own glory, but he gives all the glory back to his master. So Paul here developed his servant heart by submitting himself to God's will so that people around him could see his good work and give glory to God. 
So look at uh, uh, Job's story again. You see that God willed um, Job's uh, affliction to show everybody around him as well that he didn't just follow God because God prospered him, God blessed him. He loved God dearly and he faithfully served God even when everything was stripped away from his life. God is an economical God. He doesn't waste a move. So God wants to develop a servant heart within you. He wants to keep you humble through your affliction, your suffering. And, and listen to Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. All praise to God. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. You see, God allowed Paul to experience many persecutions, hardship. Uh, shipwreck, uh, hunger, danger, misunderstanding, and criticism so that Paul could be a more mature servant for God, a blessings to comfort and, and help other people. So friends, through your affliction, through your suffering, you will become a more mature Christian and be a blessings and give hope and comfort to people around you. So know that your affliction and your suffering is not a punishment, but a training program for your good. So God has a purpose for your life. He wants you to live a full, meaningful life for Him. So pray that uh, uh, you will meet somebody with a similar struggle like you. Um, God will answer your prayer, I'm sure. And He will use you. And you will be an inspiration to someone. And you will forever change someone's life for his good. I remember I learned this lesson when, when I uh, broke my arm and my leg. Lying in bed in San Francisco Hospital. Uh, when I look at myself after the surgery, I had nothing on me. No glasses, uh, no wedding ring, uh, no watch, uh, no cell phone, but IV tubes. And the hospital gown only. At that moment, I realized that I know Jesus is all I need in principle. But I don't really know Jesus is all I need until I look at myself and realize that Jesus is all I have. God's megaphone of pain and suffering woke me up to see that Jesus is all I need. So now I appreciate any kind of suffering in life, big or small, because they give meaning to my life. It, 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 I can learn through my affliction, through my suffering, through my struggle, and help other people and give them hope and comfort. And lesson number two, turn your pain to purpose. So let's read uh, verse 7 again. Paul said, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. You see, the Greek word of given is dinomi. Uh, on a few occasions, it means to present a gift or an offering to someone. So in the New Testament, there were three occasions that refer to Jesus giving his life, giving, him, giving up himself to others. So God used this satanic attack to keep Paul humble. Instead of defeat, God used this affliction to develop humility within him. This thorn of affliction became a gift. A, a key to victory and effective service for God. So thorn is a sharp, rigid plan. And if you step on one, it causes distress, discomfort, aggravation for days. Uh, some of you remember last year, last October, our church uh, sent the uh, uh, short-term mission team to Zambia. 
after a long day of ministry, we were just tired. So uh, we, we want to relax. So we walk around the backyard of the uh, place where we stay. And uh, we saw that a lot of fruits that they were growing. Uh, while we were walking around, uh, I happened to be the lucky one. I step on uh, at least a two inch thorn facing up. It went straight through my shoes and hit my paw uh, and hit my, my, my foot. Uh, uh, let me tell you, it was painful. Uh, here is a sh short clip uh, of me. Ouch. Careful. Did you step on a thorn? Okay. Be careful. Whoa. We don't know. Uh, what Paul referred to as a thorn in his flesh. Many theologians and, and commentators think that it was his eyesight or maybe the speech disability, epilepsy, migraine, or maybe false uh, apostles around him. Uh, but in general, people believe that it was his uh, physical illness. Uh, nobody knows for sure, though, what kind of physical illness that he had. But I can tell you, whatever that was, it was unpleasant. It was painful, irritating, aggravating for days, day after day, and it was humbling. I can only imagine that this thorn in Paul's flesh continued to torment him. It must have had, uh, he must have had to endure a, a lot of extreme pain and beating on his body. And same thing for Job. God lower the hatch of protection, and allowed the affliction from Satan to test Job's faith. God used both Job and Paul's affliction, pain, and suffering as the catalyst to prepare them for the future ministry. Victory doesn't always come easily, friends. So sometimes we must struggle, we must persist in the face of obstacles. Maybe you are under Satan's attack right now. Maybe your life is full of obstacle. Maybe you're stuck. Maybe nothing goes your way. I don't know. But through obstacles and through Satan's attack, I know that God is teaching you humility, building your character and helping you to trust him more. So turn your pain into a key to victory over Satan's attack, over any obstacle in your life. God can turn ordinary people like you and me to be effective servants, to fulfill His mission, His purpose uh, in this world. And lesson number three, never stop praying. Even when things don't go your way, don't give up praying. See, Paul ran to God and had a candid uh, conversation with Him. Paul was honest about his uh, uh, situation with God. And, and you can hear that uh, in verse 8. Three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Paul wanted God to simply just take this physical illness or, or affliction away. He wanted to serve God. That's all he wanted. Uh, he didn't want this affliction to, to plague him, to inhibit uh, his ability to, to serve God, to minister to God's people. So Paul was persistent in his prayers. I probably prayed three different times or three different occasions. It could mean that he prayed in three different seasons rather than three times in, in, on, uh, on the same day or in the same hour. Uh, remember, before the crucifixion, Jesus had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with God as well. Jesus prayed three times to God the Father. All happened in one night. He didn't want to go to the cross. He wondered if there were any other options to save humanity. He knew that it would be painful. It would be difficult. But I love how Jesus handled God's difficult task. He didn't rebel. Instead, he prayed. He talked to God about it. Jesus kept praying until he understood God's heart. You see, prayer is not to change God's mind, but to align our mind and our attitude to His. That's exactly what Jesus did. 
Sometimes we have this false expectations about prayer. We think that, well, I'm, I'm a Christian. Uh, God cannot be uh, willed this way for me to suffer. Not this way. So I claim the victory of Jesus over Satan right now. And God is going to deliver me right now. Well, it often happens that way, but not always. Not always. So both Paul and, and, and Jesus pray three times and ask God the Father to remove the suffering, this affliction from their lives. But God did not answer their prayers. He did not take it away of their suffering. So my friends, are you experiencing some affliction, some suffering that you want God to take it away? Either something that happened to you or maybe something that God wants you to go through. Maybe you have been praying to God about uh, this one or maybe a few things many, many times throughout your Christian journey. Um, maybe this one or few things reoccurring to you all the time. Maybe it was sickness, illness. Maybe it was your boss. Maybe it was your work issue, your marriage, your study, uh, your, your ministry, or maybe your future. Uh, maybe it, it has something to do with uh, how you should treat other people or how you are being treated by other people. Um, perhaps uh, it was about uh, uh, your belief, what you should practice your faith. Perhaps your answer from God is no. Or maybe your issue has not been taken away or has not been changed. But friends, run to God again. Keep on praying. Keep on serving God no matter what. Prayer has the power to change your heart. So submit those areas of your life to God right now. Admit your feeling. Keep talking. Keep praying to God until you agree with Him. Trust me, when you see, uh, when, when you do that, you will see a breakthrough in your life when you are being honest with God. And lesson number four, trust God's grace to lead you to victory. Uh, you, you know, Paul wanted uh, God to take him out of the situation, out of the affliction, but God took him through the affliction. Paul prayed for healing three times. God didn't heal him. Instead, God gave him the most comforting, reassuring, healing words that ever recorded. He said this in verse 9, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. God brought his sufficiency of grace and the mighty power into the picture here. You see, God, uh, this is what God means by that. Yes, you are going to go through your affliction, your suffering. Yes, you are going to have heartache, headache. Yes, you are going to suffer. Yes, you're going to have pain, struggle in your life. But my grace, my power are more than enough, totally adequate to carry you through moment by moment day by day for the rest of your life. You see, if there are two sign-up sheets for issues of life, here's a picture. One, for God delivers me. One, for God's grace is all you need. Now, how many of you would sign up with God's grace is all you need? <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Uh, I have a hunch that... Uh, uh, that uh, you wouldn't want that either. So most of us, if not all, would sign up for God's, for God's deliverance. God deliver me. And probably no one would sign up that for God's grace is all you need. You see, in this fast-paced, comfort-driven world, we want to get things done quick as quickly as possible, as painless as we can. So, so I believe that it takes more faith to accept and experience this answer of grace from God more so than it does for faith to be healed and delivered. Um, don't get me wrong though, God still 
does healing and deliverance uh, and deliver us today. But sometimes God chooses not to. Oftentimes, uh, we will get mad. We will get uh, really agitated uh, at God when, when, uh, 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 when uh, we didn't get our answer that we want. It is easy to blame God when life goes wrong. Uh, we could uh, 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 say that, you know, it's your fault, God. I mean, look, you could do something. You could stop anything. You could change anything, but you didn't. So God, what's going on here? When God says no, or when God is silent, people would say that God didn't answer their prayers. God didn't deliver me. God didn't say yes to me. God didn't answer my prayer. Well, you believe that God did not answer your prayer because it didn't go your way. When you were a teenager, did your parents grant you everything you asked for? Probably not. Uh, if your child wants to go out and hang out with someone at night, uh, or want to do something with their friends late at night, would you say yes? Maybe. You may say yes, or you may say no, or you may say talk about that later. But all of these are answers to your child's question. So friends, life is complex. There are things in life when God says to you, my grace is all you need. But you don't like it. You are struggling. You are fighting inside of you. You think that God didn't answer you. God did not deliver you. God did not do anything. God has done nothing of what you want. When things don't go your way, I believe you have two choices. Number one, either you kick and scream in disbelief against God's answer, or by faith, you accept God's answer for this season. Many of us would probably stack up and, and say to God, well, I can't handle uh, this issues or this hardship uh, any longer. Uh, not another year, not another month, not another week. And remember what Jesus said in, in Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So by faith, we believe that Jesus gives us enough grace and strength for today and each day. His grace is based on His richest glory and not based on our, the depths of our faith. If you receive Jesus right now at this moment, you have enough faith, you have enough grace to get through for today. Jesus promised us that His grace is enough, is sufficient for us to get through each day at a time. His grace is new every morning. And I remember when I was in a wheelchair and my wife Ellen had to uh, take me around to the hospital for x-rays, doctor's appointment, uh, to the rehab center. When I look at my current state in the wheelchair, I, I said to myself, I cannot handle sitting in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. And then I got depressed. The truth was that my rehab, my exercise would help me so that I could begin to walk in a few months. But I borrow all the troubles from the future and stack them all up for one day. When things didn't go my way, I said to Jesus, I can't go on like that. I don't have enough grace. I don't have enough of your grace to get through my day. Meanwhile, Jesus says, I will give you enough grace for today. Some of you may be struggling with your illness. Maybe your job, maybe your marriage, maybe your school, perhaps uh, your boyfriend or girlfriend, and maybe your finance. Uh, maybe you're saying that you cannot handle this anymore for another year or two years, 10 years, whatever, however long. But you borrow all the troubles from the future and you stack them all up and face them with today's grace. You are claiming what Jesus did not promise you. 
And this is why you're mad. The truth is that uh, you may not be uh, at the same place with the specific struggle in about a year or two years or however long from now. But if you are, Jesus promised you that my grace is all you need. His grace is more than enough for any situation. So this is what you need to do. Take one day at a time. Uh, John, by the way, said this. Uh, John, by the way, said this. Uh, um, uh, what did he say? He said, um, oh, inch by inch, life is a singe. Yard by yard, life's hard. So friends, don't borrow tomorrow's trouble or the trouble from the future and stack them up for today. Leave tomorrow, leave the future alone. When things don't go your way, Jesus promised you that you will have enough grace to face today and each and every day. Life is a journey with God full of ups and downs, twists and turns. So take one moment at a time, one step at a time, one minute at a time. Okay, can you say that with me? Say this with me. One moment at a time, one step at a time, one minute at a time. There are 1,440 minutes in a day. On average, if you take seven hours of sleep each night, you will have just barely over 1,000 minutes to face each and every day. So take one step at a time, one minute at a time. No matter what happened, what, no, no matter what you face every step or every minute, you have enough grace to get through today. Tomorrow, when tomorrow comes, have faith to believe that Jesus will give you enough grace and strength to face tomorrow. Well, maybe you're saying, well, you know what, Pastor Rex, I can't wait till tomorrow. I can't handle tomorrow. I can't face my affliction. I can't face my struggle anymore. I, I am weak. I am cracking. I'm breaking. Run to Jesus now because he promised you that my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. When you're weak, then you're strong. Why? Because God's extraordinary power will sustain you, will hold you together. You're stronger than ever before. Do you know that? God's power, full power, manifests to you and to those around you through your weakness. I remember in my first year of university, someone gave me a wooden dresser uh, because he graduated. So uh, he too inherited from someone. Uh, he probably didn't like the color. Uh, so he painted the dresser with uh, another layer of paint on top of the paint. Uh, most likely it was wall paint. Uh, so one day I decided to refinish this dresser. This refinishing process was, was just fun and, and, and it's awesome. Uh, I used uh, the chemical paint remover uh, to strip away all the paint as well as the old varnish. Then I borrowed uh, somebody's uh, palm sander and I sand it down. Expose all the uh, uh, scratches, cracks and crevices that need to repair. Uh, the, the sanding post process continued until the wood surface was smooth and, and, and even. Okay, and, and then I varnish the dresser over and over again until the surface was smooth and shiny. You see, the purpose for refinishing uh, was to restore this dresser to the original intended look. So friends, when things don't go our way, sometimes God allows affliction, struggles, pain, suffering in our life to strip us down. And as time goes on, our circumstances wear us down like this palm sander until every scratches, every cracks, every crevices are exposed in our life. This is the part that hurts the most. And, and, and by this time, most believers would cry out in pain. What comes, down, what comes next is the most important part. We must trust God 
that His grace is all we need and is all sufficient. His grace comes like the varnish, pouring all over us, covering us, restoring us to back to the original intended look, so that the reflection of Christ can be seen through us. We will find power we've never had before to overcome any circumstances, any issues, because the power of Christ is working through us. He will lead us to a greater victory in life when we are weak. Then we are strong. Can I pray for you this morning, dear Heavenly Father? Thank you for your grace and for your power. We admit that sometimes we're mad at you, we're angry at you, because things didn't go our way. We wanted you to go our way. Sorry, God, forgive our selfishness, forgive our weakness too. But Lord, today, help us. To rely on your strength, your grace, because you promise us that your grace is all we need. It is enough. It is sufficient for each and every day. So, Lord, help us today to learn to take one moment at a time, one step at a time, one minute at a time, step by step, minute by minute. We will be able to get through our struggle with Your grace. So, Lord, I want to pray for those in front of the TV right now, in front of the monitor right now. Some of these people struggle right now, struggle their finance with their finance, with the physical illness. Maybe some of you contracted coronavirus. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray right now. That your healing be upon them, and I pray right now that your grace is sufficient for them each and every day. Help us not to borrow trouble from the future and stack them up today. You only promise us grace for today. So, Lord, I want to thank you. Thank you for these people who are watching. Bless them, O oh Lord. You're not punishing them. You're preparing them. You are using this as a training program so that you can use them for your ministry in the future. So, Lord, I pray a blessings on them right now. I pray that you will strengthen them. You will see them through. You will be with them each and every moment. So, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for these people. I pray that they will experience victory in their life. Thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. So, friends, have a wonderful week, and I'll see you in two weeks. Good morning, VCPC family. Glad to have you join us for today's worship service and to hear Pastor Rex speak about when things don't go our way. The collection of Christmas shoe boxes at our church is going very well. Um, I will provide you with the total count next Sunday. Thank you to Chris, Danny, Noel, Annie, Eden, Sandra, Nora, and Victor for helping with the shoe box collections. Uh, thank you for your shoe box contributions. Dr. Henry made announcement on Thursday this week for extending a new order until December 7th at midnight. No social gatherings of any size at your residence with any, anyone other than your household or core bubble. No in-person gatherings uh, and worship services at uh, places of worship. Uh, it used to be limited to 50 people max and now it is not allowed for any size. Uh, masks are mandatory for everyone in all public indoor settings such as shops, grocery stores, food establishments, community centers, workplaces, and any place where the public can go. Non-essential travel should be avoided. For full details, please visit the BC government website. 
Please note that Pastor Rex will be taking November 23rd to 27th off, and Pastor Tim will be taking November 25th to the 27th off. Please reach out to Nora at 604-876-1221. Your tithes and offerings can be made at the church website via Interact e-transfer, pre-authorized debit, or credit cards. May the Lord bless you with your cheerful giving. Let us pray at this time. Our Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and thanks. We come to you in the name of Jesus. We ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for your message today, and we pray that you will show us your way when things don't go our way. We want to align our life with your perfect will and to trust you fully for what is best for us. We continue to pray for everyone at BCPC, our pastors, church and daycare staff, board members, leaders, volunteers, and attendees, that your plan be followed. May we be obedient to you and dedicate each morning to you for our daily directions. We pray for non-believers around the world that they will receive your hope that will lead them to salvation. We pray for your protection from the coronavirus and that you will help with the development of the vaccine. Fill us with your spirit and lead us this week. We pray all these things in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. I leave you with verses found in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 of the NIV. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Have a wonderful week, and come back next Sunday.